Uh, the White House is apparently furious that Russia trolled them in the Oval Office just on Wednesday, right? The day after Donald Trump fired FBI Director James Comey, Donald Trump held a somewhat secretive meeting in the Oval Office with the Russian Foreign Minister, Sergei Lavrov, and Russia's ambassador to the US, Sergei Kislyak. Now, if those names sound familiar to you, they should. And that's why the optics of the meeting are a disaster. I'll get into the specifics in a second, but the optics are a disaster. The day after firing, the person in charge of the FBI's investigation into Donald Trump's connections to Russia, you invite to the White House some of the Russians specifically involved in the undisclosed meetings of your own White House's staff. So that's really, really sketchy. But then they have this meeting and the White House doesn't allow American reporters in the Oval Office to cover the meeting before the meeting or after the meeting, but Russian media is allowed to cover the meeting. This was the day after Trump fired Comey. Like I said, one of the people at the meeting is Russian Ambassador Sergei Kislyak, whose meetings with Trump uh, surrogates are part of the investigation that's taking place. Kislyak met with Jeff Sessions, met with campaign advisor Carter Page, met with disgraced and shamed former national security advisor Michael Flynn met with Trump's son-in-law and current advisor Jared Kushner. Multiple officials from the U.S. intelligence community, community have said that Sergei Kislyak is widely considered to be a spy. So the White House invites him to the Oval Office, Sergei Kislyak, ignores security concerns of inviting a widely suspected Russian spy into the Oval Office, but then only allows Russian media to cover the meeting. I, I'm saying this facetiously, but maybe we should start trusting the White House a little more. They clearly don't care about looking corrupt because the day after firing James Comey, they have Russia, suspected Russian spies in the Oval Office and only allow, allow Russian media to photograph it. Maybe there's nothing to see there because they clearly aren't trying to cover up the obvious sketchy activities. Not only did the White House refuse to let American media cover this meeting between Donald Trump and top Russian officials, the White House became enraged when state media from Russia who were invited started publishing the pictures that they took of the meeting. Let's take a look at uh, first a tweet here. Um, where you will see the pictures published. This is uh, uh, one of the pictures that was taken in the Oval Office, Donald Trump, I believe that's uh, Sergei Lavrov there. Um, and then an anonymous White House official is quoted as having saying, they tricked us. That's the problem with the Russians, they lie. The American press was allowed to photograph Secretary of State Rex Tillerson and Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov after their meeting, and Russian state media proudly tweeted a video of Lavrov being condescending and sarcastic to the American press about Comey's firing. Here's the tweet um, where uh, Sergei Lavrov, uh, was FBI Director James Comey fired? You're kidding, pretending not to have heard of that. Here is the video of that. Take a look and a listen at this. Thank you. Does the Comey firing cast a shadow of your talk, gentlemen? Was he fired? The U.S. Yes. You're kidding. You're kidding. You are kidding. What about the part of the world? Yeah. So this is like last month when Lavrov started talking down to NBC News correspondent Andrea Mitchell saying, where are your manners? Who raised you, etc." It is so obvious that Russian government officials are just cocky and dismissive towards the press and don't take them seriously because the totally corrupt Russian government isn't held accountable by the press in the way that the U.S. government is held accountable. And it's sort of rubbing off, I guess I would say, on the Trump administration. They've adopted many of the same Russian attitudes and tactics when it comes to dealing with the press, making it harder for people to contact the White House. We've covered that. Refusing to answer questions at press briefings. I've told you about Sean Spicer leaving a press briefing without taking any questions, calling news outlets they don't like fake news, not inviting American press to important meetings like this one in the Oval Office. It's rubbing off on the White House, and it is very, very scary.